Hello, welcome to the conference, Harmony and Compassion, Music in Buddhist Ritual. I am Jin Dong Tsai. I'm a professor of music and arts and an upfunding director of US China Music Institute at Bard College Conservatory of Music. Today is our beginning of three days of conference on music in Buddhist ritual. As we know, uh, from around the world, music always play very important role in most of religions. And the religious also very much influenced the development of music. In our case, we are going to explore in this uh, conference to look into the subject from different uh, focus. And so the for the so the conference conference will have three days. The first day called uh, Buddhism, music, and society. And uh, what we want to explore is how music uh, implement into Buddhism uh, into the ceremony and uh, especially for how to make the people uh, uh, practice in the in the ceremonies. And so for then for the second day, we will focus on how Buddhism influence music creations. And on the third day, it's called a blessing, a blessing from Bhutan is a, almost like a live witness to explore how music and Buddhism religion and society uniquely united into one. So now it's my pleasure to introduce our first panel uh, for today. Uh, first, Professor Mingmei Yip, and she is a visiting professor at Chinese music history at Bar College. And then we have uh, uh, Ms. Jai Feng Jian. So she actually uh, is a social researcher uh, at China National Academy of Fine Arts, and she's joined us at, live from Beijing. And also we will have uh, Professor Chen Tao, who is also a visiting professor of Chinese music at Bard College, and also and sh and he is a, a master a diesel player. And he also he found the direct uh, the uh, melody of Dragon Ensemble in, in the United States. And then we also we have uh, Andrew Quentman, who is professor of religious studies at Wesleyan University. Welcome all the speakers. But now let me introduce the, our third speaker today, uh, Chen Tao. And Chen Tao is teaching at uh, a Bard um, Conservatory and and especially the music program. He directed the Chinese music ensemble and also teaching um, this and the Chinese bamboo flute. In that he is really very, very much internationally acclaimed uh, Chinese this player. And uh, he also created um, the, uh, the Melody of Dragon, this ensemble. And with this ensemble, they're not only performing, but they involve with education and involve with many different functions of to explore music, uh, uh, Chinese, Chinese music. So um, I really uh, wonderful. I, I feel like we're so lucky to have him in the conservatory and in the US China Music Institute. And he is very important also. He is also uh, the 27th generation musician of this Zhihua Temple music, uh, you know, uh, directly learned from, from the generations. Uh, the, the 27th generation of the student, I would say. So I think he, and um, that's what he's going to tell us about. Uh, basically, it's a, it's a learning from practice, right? learning the tradition the ritual music at Zhihua Temple. The Zhihua Temple is in Beijing. So now let's welcome uh, Professor Chen Tao. Thank you, Professor Tai, and good evening. Um, located in Beijing, Zhihua Temple not only famous for its architecture and collection of Buddhist sutras, but also the old musical scores, instruments, and especially its capital music are valuable documents to the music world. The old music preserved by this temple carries a significant meaning to the research of Buddhist music, ethnic music, and the musical history of China. 
In today's meaningful Buddhist uh, music seminar, I will focus on the music of Zhihua Temple and share with you some of my experience as the 27th generation in learning and protecting the music of Zhihua Temple. The temple was built in 1443 and bestowed the name Zhihua by Emperor Yingzhong, referencing Buddha imparting wisdom upon mankind. Zhihua Temple was used as a private temple by the family of Wang Chen, who was the first Ming Dynasty eunuch with prominent power in the court to house former court musicians and use the music to worship Buddha. Their performances were mainly used for Buddhist events and the sacrificial activities. In the early 1980s, after more than 560 years of inheritance, the last generation of monk musicians, the 26th generation, were already in their 70s. In order to rescue and preserve the ancient Zhihua Temple music, in March 1986, with the blessing and support of Ban Chan Lama and Mr. Zhao Putu, the president of the Chinese Buddhist Association, the Beijing Buddhist Music Ensemble was formed. The ensemble was led by the 26th generation of the temple's music masters, with teachers from the Central Conservatory of Music as members. Later, the teachers who studied under those monks during the time would be considered the 27th generation of inheritors of Zhihua Temple. Singing and playing with the Chinese traditional wind and percussion instruments, the solemn and elegant Buddhist music was floating from the air of the pure land. It was the first impression that I had when I stepped into the Zhihua Temple. The repertoire played by the monk musicians is mainly derived from the scores of the tune of the music, Yin Yue Changpu. These scores were hand copied by the 15th generation of Zhihua Temple musicians during the Qing Dynasty. However, from the scores, we could trace back some of town and song music notation characters. The music is used as the daily morning and evening worship, as well as ordinary Buddhist activities. The inheritance of Zhihua Temple music has always been the method of oral teaching. That is, the master plays a phrase of music and disciples repeat it. So back and forth until the whole piece of music is completed. However, because the master is aging and limited time, it is impossible for us to use the same method to learn the tradition. In such circumstances, we play our specialties as a professional musicians to record the music played by the masters and then write down the score afterwards for each instrument. After nearly half a year of notation and subsequent improvements, the score we recorded finally reached two sets of Buddhist music that can be served in the Buddhist ritual ceremony, the Zhong Tang Chu and the Yu Jia Yan Kou, honoring the deceased. Buddhism was introduced to China during the Eastern Han Dynasty. As practiced in China, it is the result of cultural exchange with India and Central Asia by the Silk Road. Other than chanting, spoke and singing the Buddhist scripture become popular during the Tang Dynasty. Buddhist story were transcribed into paintings and then told using the traditional Chinese form of spoken and singing. This gradually developed into an independent music format and finally into the Tao Chu, a set of pieces in structure of Zhihua Temple music. Zhihua Temple music can be categorized by Zhi Chu, the single piece, and the Tao Chu, a several piece combined together. Ceremony during the daytime, including the morning and evening worship, is typically accompanied by the Tao Chu, Zhong Tang Chu. In the evening, the Tao Chu is called the Liao Chao. It's for Yu Jia Yan Kou, honoring the deceased. It's played and typically with heavy percussions. The style of Zhihua music is solemn, august, and elegant. Guan Zi is the leading instrument and plays the main melody, while this adds ornamentation. The speed of the music progress from slow to fast, ending in a cadenced esque freestyle. The music of Tao Chu is linked by the percussions. It has a high requirements in terms of inheritance, does not add or delete at will, 
and pays attention to protecting the integrity of the music tradition. The Zhihua temple music is only passed on to monks, not nuns, not to non-Buddha disciples. Zhihua music today serves as an invaluable living resource for the study of traditional Chinese culture, having preserved very much intact music that, according to the research conducted by the scholars, traces its route back to the Tang and Song dynasties. At the end of the Ming dynasty, the three religions of Confucianism, Buddhism, and Taoism merged, and the rituals in the temple music combined Buddhism, Taoism, and folk music. Among the pieces that remain, the magnificent court music and the otherworldly Buddhist music is also combined with vivid, enthusiastic folk music. For a ritual ceremony, there are typically nine monks chanting accompanied by the wind and percussion instruments. When playing, the guanzi leads the melody and is required to be faithful to the original score in order to play a good charm. It also establishes a meditative uh, atmosphere and the idea of entering concentration. All other instruments improvise based on the main melody with the sound by the harmony, uh, with the sound of harmony played by Sheng and combining the guanzi and the dizi together. The guanzi served as a Buddha and the dizi placed as a human beings, which freely and lively interspersed in the melody with the different elements, symbolizing the chaotic society of man. The Sheng serves as a harmonizer to the Guanzi and the Dizi, fusing together the Buddha and man. Now, please listen to the sample Zhihua music.
Thank you, Xiaofang. <coughs> From the music we just heard, we are certain that in matters of music scores, instruments, tunes, and titles, as well as the performing styles and the techniques, Zhihua Temple music has preserved the music of Tang and Song period. That is because of Zhihua Temple's insistence on the preservation of the original qualities of their music, so that their music still remains the specific flavor of remoteness, emptiness, blandness, and serenity of Buddhist music. In 1987, the Zhihua Temple Buddhist Ensemble was invited to perform in Europe. The tour was a great success with Zhihua music being elevated to the status of a living fossil of Chinese music. In 1989, Ensemble was invited multiple times by the Singapore Buddhist Association to perform in Singapore, spreading awareness and appreci appreciation of the Buddhist music. The same year, JVC released a CD with recordings from our European tour. It can be said that the heirs of the 26th generation, together with the teachers from the conservatory, brought the music tradition from the brink of extinction to the new zenith. However, it is said that with the passing of the older generation of musician monks, Zhihua music is once again verging on the age of demise. Although the teachers of the conservatory were able to record the music scores played by the monk musicians, this is only a part of the intangible heritage of the Buddhist music tradition. Elements like chanting and the overall entails of the ritual can only be transmitted and passed down to the monks of the temple. On the other hand, the disciples recruited by the temple today due to their backgrounds and inexperience with music, as well as the reality of maintaining a living, have mostly given up on music to pursue their personal life. This is the current state of Zhihua music. Regardless, as a musician, especially as a 27th generation, we have presented what we've learned to Western audiences. In addition to trying to continue the incense of Zhihua Temple, it is also a wish to carry forward the true incense of Buddhism. In spring of 2013, we had a Zhihua Temple music concert in Boston. Before the concert, as the 27th generation, I give an overview on the history and the main characteristics of Zhihua music to orient the audiences in understanding and appreciation. Afterwards, the overwhelming feedback was the introduction had helped them to fully immerse in the experience, almost as if witnessing the first-hand a Buddhist ritual. In 2001, invited and supported by the New Jersey Buddha Lights Association founded by Xing Yun, the Master Xin Yun, I assisted in the establishment of New Jersey Buddha Light Youth Chinese Orchestra. In addition to training them with the basic Chinese music, I've also focused on rehearsing some repertoires related to Buddhist music and regularly performed in Buddhist ceremonial activities. I also composed a piece, Salt of Zen, for Chinese Diza and Orchestra. And I believe that all of this is related to the Buddhist sentence of circular causality. In 2007, invited by the Smithsonian Institution, we present the music of Zhihua Temple again in an exhibition hall at the Freer Gallery with Buddha sculptures in Washington, DC. Finally, as the title of our seminar, Harmony and Compassion, I hope that we can live in a wonderful world with a compassionate mind. May the world be peaceful and all beings be safe. Amitabha. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Professor Chen. It is a wonderful speech. And uh, it's just uh, guiding the heart of the music. For me, I always believe any art art form, and if it has been exist, for hundreds or thousands of years, it must have either an artistic value or social value. And so that's what I think um, we need to learn more about that specific music than in terms to learn more about that cultural. As the world has become so diverse that we have different cultures to coexist. 
So um, so that and also especially this instrumental music is as as you said it's like a, it's almost like an extension of the human body human voice and the human emotion so that you can hear from that music and you can hear this kind of a, 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 a you almost sometimes it's a, a script but at the same time it's improvised. It's it's it throughout this this play, so it's it's really wonderful. And I already get many many uh, quite a few questions asking about uh, the the notation of the uh, Miller Ripa's uh, the, the, the time the songs, or um you know some people comment to say there's so many uh, like overlap with the Catholic face. It's music, musically. So I definitely agree with that. I hope we have time to discuss that in the end. And now we may have a quite a, a time to just answer a couple of questions. Um, I, and first of all, I want to answer some general questions. And um, first is to say, uh, like a, uh, if there's a recording of the music we played, you say, yes, everything we did on this uh, session will record the whole session. You will be able to uh, to to watch it again, or you can send your friend to watch again. And uh, also the uh, the scholars, the professors uh, uh, manuscript. I think we could uh, we will we already have a Miss Yes uh, Yes uh, Professor Yes. Uh, uh, article put online, but I think I will ask other scholars if they're willing to put this online, then we can all share their thoughts. And then, uh, as I mentioned, and, and the performance, some of them you want to, you know, to hear more performance of those uh, specific ceremonies um, the scholar had been mentioned as yes. And, you know, a year, uh, uh, one hour from now, from eight o'clock Eastern time, we'll have a one hour a specific one hour performance basically and to just focus on different type of ceremonies from different type, different region, regions and you will have uh, the time to watch them so each section probably will have a uh, uh, less than 10 minutes so you will, you will see seven or eight different type of ceremonies and and, and using different type of music and for different functions so those are the questions, okay? And then I would like our scholar to ask, to, to answer one final question. I think this question I combine with uh, several questions together. Basically, it's about the notation, about music notation. I would like the Professor Quentman and someone asking you about to say, uh, they want to know more about this the numeral or symbolic notation of this, uh, uh, you know, Mila Ripa, this music. So if you can answer that, then after you and also and other people ask about the notation used in uh, Professor Yip's uh, uh, presentation. And those are what was are those the beyond those uh, you know Chinese the, the Western notation, right? And then Professor Chen uh, Chen Tao, someone asked you for the generation by generation to uh, to continue this tradition. What kind of notation they use, or if there's a notation? Okay, and uh, Professor Chen. Well, uh, the notation for the Zhihua music is uh, just like the the old one is just like the character. It's uh, very similar to uh, to the Gong Chi Pu, which is used by the the Queen Chu and the other opera music. Um, but uh, opera actually, music. right, 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 like Gong Chi Pu. Yeah. Actually, for the for the monks, they even they really don't need the music because uh, the teaching for them is an oral method. Yeah. To teach. <laughs> they learn from the masters. Yeah. The, the the master play one phrase and they. Uh, play that one until the, they finish the whole thing. But uh, uh, the music for us, we uh, when we go to the temple, we went to the temple. Uh, we are using the the notation is so we call the the numbering system we are using now. Uh, so it's uh, just like uh, in Chinese we call the jianpu. So that's the notation we use to learn from the masters. For those monks, they never use the notation. <laughs> mm -hmm. But who notated the, the, the sound? Who notated the sound into numerical notations? Who we did. We oh, did. Okay. Okay. Yeah, okay. We did. We, yeah. So that's why uh, we are considered, for those teachers, we are considered as uh, 27th generation. So we recorded each sound. Yeah. yeah. 
Wow, this is a definitely a bigger question. You know, if we have the tradition there, it's it's a kind of a musical fossil. We need to preserve them. Well, what the, how we can preserve them? They really that's. Uh, I hope we can find a common language. We can translate <laughs> all those from a Mila Ripa to Zhihua Tempo or to Tibetan uh, La Brown chanting. Oh. The whole world can understand. I think that will be really wonderful thing to do. But uh, yeah, but I want to. In the end, I just want to thank all the speakers and the scholars and give us a very very insightful uh, information and your your research experience with the Buddhist music. And uh, I really, will, there's more to be discussed. That I would like to continue this conversation in the next maybe uh, next year. We will have another uh, platform to to do this in more in depth uh, discussion. And I just want to remind our uh, listeners and audience, and we will have a, a ceremony uh, presentation in less than an hour from now. And to to present to you the music, including the Zhihua Temple, like uh, 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 Professor Chen mentioned, and uh, Wu Tai San, and uh, the middle uh, middle uh, mid side mid, in the middle of China, and in the southern of China, and uh, also there's a, a presentation by a very special non temple and from Taipei from Taiwan. So they specifically made a presentation for us um, to 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 show it to show you how do they do the uh, uh, ceremony and so all those and also La Brown La Brown is the Tibetan style Tibetan uh, Buddhism uh, ceremony. It's a really wonderful and you see it. It's uh, it definitely is a wonderful presentation. I, I I'm looking forward to to watch them again. So again, thank all the scholars, and I hope we'll see you tonight and tomorrow. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, thank you so much. So we're done.